guys, and welcome back to our YouTube channel, Fulfill, Fulfill the, the Game, Game of Life. Life. Well, if you watched our last video where we introduced you to Madeira, we're going to start this second video here with describing our stay a bit, and more importantly, if we were tourists again, how, how would we, we would do, do it? this? Because we learned. <laughs> you definitely learned. Learn. There yeah. are better ways to do things yeah. uh, than we knew, and that's okay. Uh, we hope to pass that information along. To so when you finally book a flight to Madeira, that you maximize the beauty of this place while you're here. And you avoid some of the pitfalls. Yes. So, let's get started. Now, the first thing that was unique about our visit uh, was really not uh, the ideal way to do this, but we were kind of forced into this. We actually stayed at five different places over a little over three weeks, three and a half weeks. And uh, the reason for that is the worst financial decision I've ever made in my whole life. I purchased a timeshare. That's another video for another day for the other channel. Um, but it created multiple things. I had collected up points. Uh, I had extended those points. They were all about to expire. So I said, you know what? We're going to go to the island. We're going to use every point that I possibly can. Well, good news is I was able to use the points. Bad news is you couldn't stay in any one of these places for more than one week because of the way that availability was. And then worse than that, the checkout date of one place was never the check-in date for the other place. Which uh, forced, us, forced us to have to overlap by staying at a hotel. So we went check-in one day, stay for a week, check out, stay for three days, right. check out, go check in for a week, and then a two-day overlap with the final stay. So we honestly, although we were there for more than uh, three weeks, uh, three and a half weeks, we spent five days moving, yeah. and uh, that consumed quite a bit of our time. But uh, we finally got to use the points, I guess. So anyway, five stays, the good news is that gives us a unique view of the island. It really did, because they were, obviously they were all in different locations. So our very first day was the first day we got there and we stayed a whole one night. One night, but it was pretty, it was pretty amazing uh, because we were right on the ocean and the hotel is called Orca Praia. And, and it was beautiful. It was amazing because I had never seen a beach with black sand. Yeah, that was and a new And let me tell us. you, that on your first night or day of staying on an island, I was sold. I was in love. Yeah, you're like, this is so cool. So yeah. uh, the, the black sand, we, we've seen it on video such as in Hawaii, uh, but we've never been there. And uh, to see it and run your hands through the black sand was awesome, wasn't it? Absolutely. I loved it. Beautiful place to stay. We got some fantastic drone footage. And uh, what else can you say? <laughs> Just beautiful. Yeah. So after the first night, we hop into a taxi and we taxi ourselves over to the second stay. Absolutely, which was in Camara do Lobos. And the hotel we stayed at was uh, the Estana Churchill Bay. Yeah, so as we told you in the, the first video, uh, this area was highly influenced by Winston Churchill. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a painter, absolutely loved the island, and we understand why. And he loved to paint uh, the landscape of that bay. Yep, so as we stayed in the bay, it was beautiful. I mean, it was really it, beautiful. It was phenomenal. And um, being an island, there's a lot of precipitation, so it rains quite a bit. And of course, after the rain comes the rainbows. And we saw one of the most beautiful that, one in our life. Absolutely, just vibrant, super vibrant. And it was a double rainbow, and it was just just amazing to watch yeah so just a few more highlights of the stay i mean we we literally could sit on the balcony we're literally looking at the bay uh we could see the tourists walk by in the mornings there were restaurants everywhere uh the bay the water um people in kayaks i mean it was just it's fantastic it was an absolutely beautiful stay And an easy location to pick up the bus to ride down to Funchal as well. That's a great, that's a great lead-in. 
as we mentioned, uh, we, for the first time, forced ourselves into uh, a bit more public transit than we right. were used to, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we didn't really want to rent a car for uh, almost three and a half weeks, right? That would have literally doubled the cost of the trip. And uh, we were uh, setting up tourism uh, trips, uh, ocean trips, those things. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was far enough away you couldn't walk there. So we forced ourselves to... Uh, become really uh, a bit more well acquainted with the bus routes. Yes, we did. That was an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> now, Fun. let me give you a, the first piece of advice I would strongly recommend. On your phone, download the app called Rome, Rome to, to Rio. Rio or Rio to Rome. We'll put it on the screen. Uh, fantastic application. Put where you're at, put where you want to go. And it will give you uh, where you walk to pick up the bus and the different bus lines you can choose. Exactly. It's, it's just a fantastic application for uh, new visitors. So if you're going long enough and you want to uh, use public transit, find the app. It's obviously not just for the island. It's for all over Europe, maybe even in the United States, but fantastic application. Uh, so... We uh, did a couple of uh, bus trips. We're going to save our day trips, which were basically ocean trips. We had a couple of those, but that's for another video. We just want to tell you, we stayed in the bay. We love the bay. Um, and uh, after a week there, uh, once again, it didn't match up to the next day uh, at a uh, resort. It was. So we changed location. We did, and our next day after that actually was a three-day uh, overlap until we got to the next uh, resort, which is Babosa's Village. And I think the, the, the first two hotels, I thought, wow, I love this place. But each consecutive stay kind of overrode that excitement because this hotel was at an elevation and the location had four different tourist sites to experience. And to me, I think that was, not only was the hotel just amazing, the breakfast was phenomenal. Um, you could catch a couple cable cars and there were two botanical gardens. One of the gardens was part of a palace. And it, I, I think, we just loved it because you could see the cruise ships come in and stay and then they would multiply because there was one ship one day and then two more ships docked and you could just see everything and it was so amazing. Yeah, so not to repeat everything she said, but let me, the, the excitement was, was really phenomenal. It was a little bit humorous. We didn't really know where we had booked. We had no real idea of... of it was a beautiful the accidental loca location. Yes, of the actual location that we ended up staying. Um, it was really high, basically just at the, over Funchal, so you could see all of Funchal, uh, but more interestingly, you literally walked off the cable car and to the right about 100 yards, maybe not even quite 100 yards, and uh, you're at the hotel. Okay, we're at the end of the cable car, and... Uh, the coolest part of this actually is, is let's just show how close we're actually staying to the cable car. Yes. So it's right at the uh, the end of the... So convenient. It's actually, it was kind of an accident it for was. us. <laughs> Neither one of us were quite aware. Uh, we liked the way that it looked, but we didn't know it was this close to, uh, to this much. Uh, so we're just going to briefly walk around the corner and walk into our uh, hotel room and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. It's, it's, it was literally a perfect location. Uh, we we will were, stay there again. Yeah, we know. would strongly recommend that you look at this place. Uh, Christy is not understating this. After nine months of uh, travel throughout uh, Europe and Portugal, the best breakfast, hands down, that came with the, uh, the room rental, mm -hmm. best breakfast, hands down, the most unique, 
uh, eggs and warm eggs every day. Just just a phenomenal uh, hotel to stay at and not very costly. So yeah. and the staff was just amazing. It's fantastic. The hotel again is called uh, Babosa's Village. Yeah, we'll put it on the screen for you. We strongly recommend it. But let me give you a, a different. Uh, after the end of five stays, uh, what became evident to me though that, that I wouldn't have guessed is there's this desire to get closer to the beach. That's that's what uh, you do when uh, you uh, grow up or you're at the beaches in uh, the, the Gulf Coast. You want to get closer to the beach. And uh, we did. We spent the very last week literally against the beach with a, with a, a beach view. And I'll tell you, if I had it all to live again, I would not progress to the beach. I would actually progress to the altitude. The things you get to see, the curiosities, the uh, the, the cruise ships, the bay, uh, you, you, the visual excitement is so much greater. And this hotel was almost perfectly placed. You get to watch the cable cars come up at all times, right? And you get to see the bay where the cruise ships are parked. So. Um, when you are considering where you want to stay when you get here, I highly encourage you to challenge your thought that you need to get close to the beach. If you wanted to go to the harbor in uh, Funchal, mm -hmm. well, you hop on a cable car and you're down there. No taxi, uh, no rental car. You just you can go up and down and, and be right downtown by hopping on a cable car. So I know it's a long description to say we Love the place. That place. We we stayed for three three whole days, mm -hmm. and uh, and then our next day started at Alto Lido, Alto Lido, which was in Funchal, and uh, it was about I'd say three rows back from uh, being quote on the beach. Mm -hmm. uh, we could see some view of the beach. Uh, we had a nice room overlooking the pool. Mm -hmm. And it was very central to plenty of places to eat. Absolutely. The um, store, the yeah. grocery store. Yep. So so it was nice and convenient. Mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't as uh, wasn't as interesting as the uh, the previous. So our last stay uh, for the last week was at Bastana Grand. Nice hotel, once again, or resort, uh, five-star resort. Mm -hmm. uh, good view, really nice pool, but it was, it was kind of cool, and, and it was raining. Once again, just repeating myself, the view is better from on high than it is sitting right next to the beach, in my opinion. Or Camara de Luz. That was my second favorite, I think. The next thing we want to talk about is the weather and what you should expect when you're on the island. Well, you should expect... The unexpected. Hi, we're reporting live from a storm. <laughs> <laughs> is it going to blow us away? It, maybe. I think the bad weather is coming. I think it's arrived. All right, well. <laughs> <laughs> we had to go into a souvenir shop and buy ponchos so that we could just stand in the rain for fun. <laughs> this is my first attempt at being a weatherman, and I am predicting rain. <laughs> Be prepared for every type of weather. Have a poncho, have an umbrella. Um, yeah, I don't think shorts. you're going to stay on this island no. and not, uh, not have to deal with rain. And uh, if you allow rain to make you sit in your room, you're going to lose too much time. Be mentally prepared and be physically prepared with garments that make you comfortable in the rain because you're almost for certain going to deal with it. The good news is uh, the temperatures are extremely mild year-round. Um, looking up online, you can see that the temperatures are in the low 60s in the winter, mm -hmm. but they're only in the uh, low to mid 70s in the summer. So very temperate, um, no cold, really cold days, and no really hot days. So as we're talking about the temperatures, just understand that there's going to be microclimates. So if you're in Funchal and it's a bit warm and sunny, just understand that if you go up into the mountains, dress warm, take a jacket, take a sweater, because it's going to be a little cooler and probably a little more cloudy. Um, so just understand that you have to be prepared for that type of weather as well. Part of the fascination of this island is the change in altitude. And we're going to share so many things that you see and how quickly the altitude changes. And of course, with, with altitude changes, is temperature changes. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the very first couple of days that we're there, actually, we're looking at uh, the weather, and I captured here the uh, the fact that it was snowing at altitude mm -hmm. uh, on the north side of the island, which again is only 14 miles away, and on the back side of the island, it's uh, 65, 67 degrees. Right? It's just you can walk around in a t-shirt and shorts as long as the sun's out. Right? Uh, so the microclimates that that Christy is uh, pointing out. Uh, they're there and you have to be prepared for them on the days that you're going to travel you're not going to leave Funchal very far and not get into high altitude right. and have to deal with cooler weather so because of the change in altitude this place is a hiker's dream we saw so many hikers we did um and here's what's unique you're gonna you're gonna be blown away at how many waterfalls that you see here because it's literally a volcanic rock um, and it rains all the time. There's water flowing all over the place. We saw it in every place on the entire island. Can you see the water waterfall back there? Yes. Isn't that awesome? It is. Going up the mountain there. How cool. How cool. We're going to show you these places uh, in subsequent videos. Uh, but there are two places that uh, we saw just in our travels that there are waterfalls onto the roads. Right? That was quite the experience. How unique is that, it was right? so unique. But it's just a hiker's paradise. Uh, and we, we saw plenty of people that came here, you could tell, just for that purpose. Absolutely. And then there's, uh, we heard about the levadas. So if you enjoy that kind of thing, plenty of, of those to enjoy as well. But you don't actually just have to be a hiker to enjoy it. Uh, we were on the back side of the island, the north side of the island, and uh, got some fantastic drone footage of a group, a big group of people. It looked to me as if they were uh, in... Learning how to surf. Surfing lessons. Yeah. And not only surfing lessons, but you look back in the distance, you look at this massive mountain cliff, and then if you look real close, there is a massive waterfall, waterfall. falling from that, <laughs> yeah. right? It was beautiful. So uh, if you like the water or you like the mountains, this place uh, sh should be on your list of places to visit. So with every different region that you end up staying in, you're going to have very unique foods to that specific region. So for instance, while we were in mainland Portugal, we had um, some of the bread and the olives and... The, the black pork, it, which is still phenomenal. <laughs> Ate it yesterday. It was really good. <laughs> I think he missed it. Um, but on Madeira Island, there was um, a regional bread called Bolo de Caco. And that bread consisted of, it was round and very buttery and very garlicky, delicious. Kind and of a thick f flat thick, bread, basically, yeah, right? Exactly. Really and, good. And then you have the Madeira wine, which is fantastic. To me, it tasted like Moscotel. And uh, what else was there? The pun? The poncha. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, everyone. And we are in, still in uh, Funchal. Yes, the we are. The very northern peak uh, of yeah. Funchal. Yep, we're on Monte something. Monte, we're just next to Monte the Palace. The palace. Yes. yes, exactly. It's beautiful up here. Uh, maybe give you a little bit of the background here, but uh, we're just going to record this little segment for we, trying the, the local... Yes, the local drink called poncha. Ah. It's a traditional drink for... Um, uh, that is from Madeira, and a lot of the uh, locals definitely suggest it to every tourist that they come across yeah every single person when have we told them where we yeah. stayed was uh, their first question yes have you tried poncha no nope. and there's a couple of different flavors um i had to look it up so that i could actually describe it to you guys and it uh is it is a uh traditional alcoholic drink from the island of Madeira. Um, and it's made with uh, aguardiente de cana, which is distilled alcohol made from sugarcane juice. Interesting. There's yeah. a bunch of sugarcane on the island, by the way. There is. And uh, what is also included is honey, sugar, and either orange juice or lemon juice. And there's um, some other flavors, too. Um, different flavors they choose to, to make it out of, but yes. the traditional. Yes. And it's actually the drink that uh, the English uh, punch is actually made from. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Wikipedia is awesome, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So does that mean, is that enough history? I think so. Should we try it? Yes. I can tell you this. 
It is strong. Just by smelling it, I am almost intoxicated. <laughs> you you want to try to smell yourself? Yeah. That is very strong. Um, and I also read that they use it as um, kind of like a medicine. When you start feeling cold symptoms, they encourage you to drink it. And by the way it smells, you probably don't feel much after <laughs> one of these things. So that probably helps. Yeah. It probably didn't help cure anything, but you didn't feel it afterwards. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, are you going to do this first Bottoms or am I going to do this? No, you're going to do it. I, I'm just going to sip. You first. All right. What is it? Oh, it is stout, but... It smells like it. It's actually, that's good. It's got a very good flavor. You know, if I do drink any kind of really hard alcohol, I prefer stuff with fruity flavors just mm -hmm. to kind of... To, give it something other right. than just alcohol and this one that i ordered it's uh orange juice and lemon juice lemon juice together yeah, it's got a really really nice tank to it yeah i could get used to that probably with about half the alcohol and it would be just about perfect for me but that that's a good drink you want to try it my turn mm. wow that is strong yeah I can feel it going down. <laughs> My stomach is nice and warm now. Well, so welcome to the island. One more delicacy, I guess, to enjoy yes. uh, in uh, Portugal, broader into Madeira. What are we, you about to eat? We're going to try a, I, I don't know if it's completely traditional here, but uh, these are limpets, which looks like they're kind of in the mussel family, honestly. And uh, I kind of enjoy mussels. Uh, not my favorite thing in the world, but... I figure this is on every menu on the island. How can you come here and stay here for a month and not try what's on the menu? So let's give it a shot. Bon appetit. I'm not sure how they eat them, so we're going to do it like this. How is it? Good. It's actually kind of less fishy than a mussel. That's actually mm -hmm. pretty good. So we're going to close the video out really with this last segment, which is we've talked about transportation, but we want to give you a kind of our advice. If we were going to do this again, there's a couple of things we want to consider, but let's just review for a minute a, a few things. First of all is there are buses going on most of the island. Mm -hmm. There are taxis everywhere. everywhere. Yes. There is no Uber. No. Which is not. interesting, right? Because we're finding we like Uber better than taxis because we get to see the fare up front and you pay it and it's done so you don't feel manipulated. But anyway, there is no Uber on the island. You have to use the taxis. And uh, we talked about the sky bucket. If you stay in the right place, you can actually use that as a form of transportation. Uh, but by far and away, the thing that we strongly suggest if you're there for a relatively short amount of time rent, rent a, a car. car you have to rent a car it, re car rentals must be half of the entire uh, uh, economic everywhere. system yes. there uh, you could see almost every car you passed uh, had uh, rental signs re rental stickers on it but you have to rent a car the island is small enough the fuel was about the same cost as a, a little bit cheaper than it was in mainland Portugal and uh, you can see the entire island on your own time at your own speed and go around the roundabouts as many times as you as you want to uh, capture what you want, right? You must rent a car, so you got to fit it in the budget. Uh, figure out where you're going to stay, uh, figure out the airfare to get over here, and uh, figure out the, uh, the rental car so you know what to budget for. Uh, the food was... Uh, a little bit more expensive than mainland Portugal, which is what you'd expect in a in a tourist uh, area, but not uh, not astronomical, not like downtown Atlanta, Georgia. Um, but maybe one last thought as well. We mentioned in passing that the, we saw as many as three cruise ships docked. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not sure of all of the cruise lines that come through Madeira. We're not sure where they leave from and where they go to. Uh, but there were enough cruise ships there that it is something you might want to consider. Is If you really do have time and you're retired early, hop on a cruise ship, come over here, get off the cruise ship, spend a week here, get back on the cruise ship, and, and land wherever your uh, transportation is. So, uh, 
transportation summary. Uh, there are other ways to get here, airlines, cruise ship, um, but in general, when you're here, if you're here for a relatively short amount of time, rental, rental car, car is pretty much Absolutely. the only choice. Mm -hmm. uh, or um, you're going to have longer days just getting from point A to point B. Thank you guys so much for sticking with us throughout this whole video. If you enjoyed the content, please remember to give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Yeah, and the first two videos aren't as remarkable as the ones that are coming. We're going to show you this island in detail as much as we could when we rented a car and the, th the things we saw and the excursions that we paid for. It was phenomenal. Just stick with us, tune into the next sets of videos, and uh, we look forward to sharing those adventures with you. And start saving money for your own uh, vacation to Madeira. It's beautiful.